hello guys sorry i'm checking my mic hello guys how are you doing i hope you are doing good if it's your first time coming across my channel you already know my intro please i would like you to do three things for me like this video leave a comment in the comment section and subscribe if you haven't subscribed okay so that we can interact in the comment section so guys i come with some exciting information i would like you to know for those of you who have just had your visa and you're curious on what to do you don't want to get lost sorry guys if i'm looking this way it's because my baby is that way and i'm just checking her to make sure she's fine so this video we're going to talk about what you must do once you enter the uk to make life easier for you in case no one has informed you in case no one has you know taught you what to do i am here for that okay so let's get right into the video so first and foremost you know when you apply for visa and you're granted the visa they're going to include a sim card into your document so that's the first thing but if you happen to misplace it or you don't want the sim card because those are quite expensive anyways you the first thing you need to do into the uk when you get in is to get a sim card this is for you to be able to contact people um especially those ones back home to let them know you have arrived even though you can still continue using your whatsapp but having a uk number is primordial for several reasons okay that you discover by yourself no one will even need to ask you and then secondly once you have entered into the uk i'm sure you'll be checking where do i get the house do i get an airbnb do i need this that, need that? yes you need to get a house whether it's um you need to get a house whether it's an airbnb whether it's a house you are renting or a room somewhere this is important because you need an address here everything happens through mail you need to the government sends you mails you you need to update your to inform you about your um, how do i say to inform you about your anyways they, they will just be sending you letters especially when you have registered with the gp you'll be receiving your letters your letters through mail so the next thing obviously is to register with your gp um just in case you are sick and you need to go to the doctors you will call your gp you see so that they can refer you to any doctor depending on what you are suffering from okay so that is the third step register with your local gp sorry guys if i'm looking down it's because my notes are here <laughs> and then from there you need to register for your brp uh, that is the biometric um biometric residence permit but apparently they said by the end of this year it's going to be digital so you can no longer have the like physical copy apparently people misplace them a lot so having like the digital one is much more better so instead of you going and waiting um at the post office for hours because you are not the only one who is going to collect the brp there, there are a lot of people long queues of people waiting to collect theirs so you can just get it online i'm sure i i don't even know how that is going to happen because it's not yet official but we were informed that 2024 is the last year of having the hard copy yeah it's like a student card <laughs> to show your status here so 2024 is the last year after that everything will be soft copy but if you're entering the uk before december 2024 you need to go directly to a post office and collect your brp it's like a form of identification to show that you're legal here also and then if you're coming into the uk if you're watching this video and you're still preparing to come i would like you to learn driving because learning to drive <laughs> in fact knowing to drive is primordial here because by the time you sit down and you calculate the money you've spent on train tickets on buses you realize that you are spending more but with a car it's going to be less because that money you can put fuel in your car and use it for like an extended amount of period when you look at what you've spent on a week on tickets and the fuel you've bought you see that at the end of the day you are the one benefiting so you can get like a temporary driver's license anybody that comes here in the uk that has been driving in africa like from when my husband moved here of course he was driving in south africa even though we didn't have a car <laughs> we didn't have a car but before that he was driving so he had a driver's license and when he came here with the south african driver's license they gave him one year of provisional driving and after that he would do the test and theory to you know the theory and the physical driving test to be able to drive properly in the uk because they are called <laughs> they're driving here it's something else it's like writing a phd exam so yes so if you are still learning how to drive before coming here it's a good thing but if you haven't just go and learn so that by the time you come here with your driver's license you will not struggle you can buy a car and drive around for one year while you are struggling to register to do the proper thing you see which is 
very very necessary and also you will need a bank account this is the most important one that's the reason why i insist on getting an address getting a house because the bank will need to verify uh, your your address like to verify you i think something like that and that can only happen through your address so once you go to the bank to open a bank account because you cannot get a job if you don't have a bank account so to open that you need a, an address yes yeah, so it is very very important and it's so easy there are so many banks here like there are standard banks and there are online banks so you must have both not like most if you want you can only have the standard bank and if you want you can also have just the online banking but it's when you are here you are going to see reasons why you must have both like when you want to shop online and buy those things where you think maybe someone can steal your card information and shop you just put little money in your online card to shop so to exhaust it so that even if they steal it nothing will be inside you see and then the standard one is just for your heavy cash like when you're being paid from your company i don't know something like that i think that's what people do here so it will depend on you anyway so you need to have a bank account and then the next thing is that you are going towards you need to vote unlike other countries where if you're not a citizen you will not vote but here once you have the proper documentation you can vote and when you vote and you register for voting um, it's going to increase your credit score like if you need to borrow money from a bank there are certain things they verify you not just go and apply to borrow money from a bank and they will say like okay you have a good job you are paid this amount of money and because of that we'll give you loan no they verify so many things and i'm telling you that voting to see if you vote is one of them i'm not joking <laughs> I'm telling you for a fact, so you need to register to vote and actually vote, not just registering. It's going to increase your credit score because it builds up your um, credit in case you need to borrow a huge amount of money tomorrow to maybe buy a house, start a business or something. It's going to be very, very important. So when you come here, you have proper documentation, you can just go ahead and then register to vote. And then probably not the last thing if you have the time or if you feel like you can do it you can register for support groups not like register you can try to reach out to the community people you know reach out to people that are here that come from the same community as you like Cameroonians in the uk kenyans in the uk um south africans in the uk you must do this because excuse me i'm very sorry for that you must do this because you get to know people and because of that there's information there's information you're going to benefit from there are a lot of things you will benefit from when you're in the community with people those groups are very important because they inform you and when there's all things you go there you don't get to feel as lonely as you were if you were not there because you get to meet a lot of people and you know it distracts you <laughs> sorry guys my baby is disturbing me there yeah so that is it and i want to inf emphasize on the support groups because here we are in the Cameroonian community, my husband and I, and had it been, we just came and he was concentrating on his job and I was just busy being a housewife and, you know, doing my thing. Guys, I'm telling you, like, <laughs> I would be, I don't know, I would be the loneliest person ever because even if you don't get to see people, but at least there you get to laugh in the group, you see people talking and arguing, it distracts you, like you feel like, okay, and when there is meetings once a month, you can go and attend, it distracts you, like it makes you feel like there are people who are out here, you are not alone, in case of an emergency, you can reach out to the president of the group and tell them, I need this help, and I tell you, they always turn out, because remember here, you do not have a family, you don't have like even if you have a best friend your best friend has got <laughs> their own life to live but when there's if you have like a brother sister with blood relations it can be better because somehow it's an obligation because you share the same room but apart from that <laughs> nobody cares my dear nobody cares so please when if you come here look for a support group and try to get inside okay so that you don't feel lonely and also the next one is if you want to buy a car don't go immediately for how do I call it? Don't go immediately for the new cars. Don't go immediately for the expensive cars. There are good shops here that sell second-hand cars. You start from there and you start climbing. And second-hand cars here are very, very, very affordable. When I say very affordable, it will beat your imagination. Cars are only expensive in Africa because of importation. Cars here are very, very affordable. So you can get a second-hand car of not even up to 500 pounds. And you'll be able to drive it for as long as possible because most of the cars come with MOT. I don't know, MOT is something that they register the car that you need to register. And then 
uh, road tax so you just need to buy a second hand car and start driving it was, it's going to save you a lot of coins it's going to save you a lot of coins whereas if you are to come here and you are looking for a branded car <laughs> guys there's always a start to everything so you take it one step at a time okay i hope this video has been able to inform and not disinform you okay i hope you find it useful and i hope you get to apply the small small advice i've given and on to see again thank you so much please leave a comment in the comment section if you have a worry let me know in the comment section and i'll make research and try to clarify your doubts and then until we meet again see you bye